all i hope you are doing well in the short video today i will walk you through several key aspects in a seller due diligence exercise including why should a seller be concerned with a due diligence exercise in mla transaction how does it help it how does it help a buyer how what form and shape should a report be prepared who all should be involved from a sell side and once the diligence exercise is complete what should a seller do with the findings so please stay tuned for all this Firstly, it allows the seller to define qualitatively and quantitatively the precise scope of business is looking to transfer to the buyer. Secondly, and perhaps the most important facet is that it allows the seller to identify very early on in the process the key transaction and pricing risks, and allows it to take appropriate measure to mitigate or eliminate those risks, and thereby improving the prospects of fetching the maximum purchase price from the buyer. The third is uh, it allows the seller to prepare a more detailed and proper information memorandum and also in a situation where the seller is dealing with multiple bidders then uh, this vendor report really helps to kind of expedite the whole process even otherwise from a timing standpoint a uh, vendor report cuts short the diligence timeliness because the buyer will then only ordinarily do a top up due diligence test the validity and findings of the vendor report and do a top up diligence to a management qa and and lastly since most sellers are for the first time doing a mna deal their house normally is in not in order and therefore this diligence exercise really sets them up very nicely when it comes to preparing the disclosure letter which is a very important shield for the seller against the representations and warranties and the seller can do a far more effective job in preparing the the uh, disclosure letter a buyer can also benefit from a seller diligence report in various ways firstly it is armed with facts at the very outset which allows it to price the risks appropriately and also truncate the overall time lag because it should only be required to then ordinarily do a top up due diligence uh, through a management qa and test the findings of the vendor due diligence report also in case of uh, acquisitions under the insolvency and bankruptcy code where the buyer does not get really any chance of doing a diligence a seller due diligence report is an incredible tool because really it gives you a quick snapshot of what the risks are and you can really uh, revise your offer or make up your mind whether to go forward with the acquisition or not so a buyer also stands to get enormously from this seller due diligence exercise to do a effective seller due diligence the sell side should Uh, have a team which is well rounded and a blend of internal team as well as external advisors the internal team should be seller's business team strategy team the finance the legal team and accounting team etc from the external advisor standpoint the lawyer should be there the the tax advisors the financial advisors they all should be part of that team along with specialists like uh, your environmental specialist or real estate specialist depending of course on the nature of the business the form of the report assumes a lot of significance therefore at the very outset the advisors and the sales side should agree on the form of the report should it be a long form report should it be a red flags report should it be issue based report or a hybrid model whatever it may be there should be complete alignment between the advisors and the sales side secondly the advisor should progressively and periodically almost on a real time basis keep the sales side informed of the issues it identifies so that the seller can review those issues discuss deliberate and take action in a timely fashion and things don't get parked till the back end and and conclusion of the diligence exercise thirdly the issue should be framed and shared by the advisors in a succinct crisp executive summary form with the key issues and the recommendations clearly being identified and lastly the report itself should be customized and tailored in accordance with the profile of the investor or acquirer who is looking to invest in the company Now, once the seller has the findings of the seller due diligence exercise before it, it must action. So, if there are issues which can have an impact on the pricing and and transaction timelines, you should try and address them at the outset. If the seller doesn't want to address them at the outset because of let's say cost implications and wants some transaction certainty, then chalk out a plan that once the definitive agreements are signed, you will 
kind of take care of that as a condition precedent. Or if the findings entail a structural change, you can carry out a structural change. The overarching objective should be to present to the buyer a house which looks not in disarray but in order and really the financial health looks good and therefore that gives you the maximum possibility to fetch a highest possible price. So, as you can see, a seller due diligence exercise is immensely helpful both for the seller as well as the buyer, whether it's identifying the key transaction and pricing this upfront, or whether uh, maximizing the purchase price, or whether helping in preparing the disclosure letter, or truncating the transition timelines or due diligence timelines, or allowing the buyer to focus on key issues right from the word go, and uh, in case of a uh, uh, IBC transaction, uh, have the benefit of a report when buyers can't do diligence. It's an enormously useful tool which must be considered. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you very much for watching this.